on this week's episode of Damsels in the DMs. What was that experience like? Oh, I worked with Mariah Carey. Oh my gosh. Are you <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> No, I was Lit, just listening yeah, to Osana yeah. yesterday. That's so funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> MC is the queen. Like This message is intended as a reminder that we are not licensed professionals, not psychiatrists or psychologists. If you have a serious problem, please seek professional help. The National Suicide Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. <laughs> There's some damsels in the DM. Yes, queen. <laughs> Tell us what's the vibe. Uh-huh. What's the vibe? There's some damsels in the DM. Yeah. Who are you? Please tell us what's the vibe. What's the DMs, vibe? DMs, <laughs> yeah, we see them. Yeah, we read them. DMs, DMs, we don't need them. We just leave them. Please. Yeah. It's going down in the DMs. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Damsels in the DMs. I'm Lauren. I'm Alejandro. How you doing, my friend? Feeling fantastic. Undocumented Tales will be, well, by the time this episode comes out, we'll already have had the premiere. But we'll be at Outfest Fusion uh, at the beginning of April. So we're super, super geeked about the acknowledgement of selection by the festival. And to see everyone. Don't you feel... A bit of nostalgia or like homesickness for after working on a project with people, mm-hmm. seeing them so often and communicating with them so regularly. And then once the project is done, it's like, oh, now, we, now we have to continue. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, do you, oh, that feeling. Well, is I just feel so like real. that hits you more, especially because you're just coming off a play. And I feel like when you're doing a play, like those people become your family. I feel like film, it's a little different because they're like, it's sort of like, the film is everything to you for a blip of time, you know, where I feel like theater drags on a little bit longer in a positive way, but I feel like it becomes your life in that once it's over, you have no idea what to do with yourself. Totally. And like the, the beautiful experimentation and the, the willingness to let every night be different um, and to have that shared among everyone. And just like you said too, the amount of time that you spend between rehearsals and actually like, performing it's a lot it's super demanding but you walk away with a a whole new family it's really really beautiful did you hit the red carpet for outfest fusion uh well that'll be coming up so i it hasn't taken place yet but i have my outfit prepared i'm so excited for you to see what it looks like and i know that that makeup was probably amazing oh yes well the makeup yeah the makeup was really fun i had to do my own character's makeup for Undocumented Tales. And like for some days we were shooting three different scenes and I would have to do three different looks within like six to eight hours. And, you know, it was it was such a cool challenge, but it was really exciting. And even more so, our guests today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm just, I, I, I said it on the, during our recording and these goddesses have blessed us with their presence and, uh, and, also, fun fact, a Mariah Carey mention comes up, and it happens to be on the day of her ber- her anniversary of life that um, we are recording. Her birthday is today. So, oh my God, how did you know that? I'm a huge Mariah fan, so. <laughs> you know what really killed me was that I, okay, have I told you about my new favorite game? What's your new favorite game? Okay, basically, I give you a lyric, right? Okay. And I say it completely monotone, and you have to um, figure out where it's from. Artist and song, you have three chances, right? Oh, I love this. I'm obsessed with this game because I'm really good with lyrics. I know, like, full songs by heart. Anyway, yeah. I'm playing this game with Brian, and I had given a line of a Mariah Carey song, right? Mm-hmm. And he was so bad at it that I also, poor Brian in this episode. Love you, Brian. Oh my God, I <laughs> Just wait till you hear. Wait till you hear. But we love you, Brian. You're doing great. And also your skin's beautiful. So don't dig into the Love you, Brian. Story. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I give him a hint because like I'm dying to play this game and he doesn't want to play it. And I was like, it's somebody who's like on the level of Beyonce and Rihanna. And when I said Mariah Carey, he couldn't get it. He did not put her on that level. Oh, I am. Well, see, I didn't have much to say. Mm, 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 No. (laughs) 
let's get into this. Oh I think my, my hands it was gotta so get fun. better. It's probably a me problem. <laughs> let's do this. I'm starting the conversation just recording in a good mood, you know, since we're laughing about Alejandro's uh, new choice of hat wear. I mean, it's nice yeah. to adorn our heads, but I'm so excited to have you both on. Thank you for joining us. I'm sure it's been a busy time of year as springtime usually is. So thank you. Of course, thank you for having yeah. us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> I've been pretty chill. I'm not going to hold you, but yeah. Okay. And uh, you... another Believe Network collab. We love to see it. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Shout how out long, to Believe. How long have you guys been on the network for? And tell us like all about how you got started with the podcast and in your careers. Let's see. We started with Believe in September of last year. And we got with them because of our agents. We have the same, we're with the same agency. Um, Brittany's in New York. I'm in LA where I got my start in New York. Um, but we didn't know each other there. We met on the internet in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dm story right there yeah. <laughs> right that probably yeah our first time meeting in real life was the day before we recorded our first episode oh my god oh my gosh wait so how yeah. did that i'm assuming you quickly like struck a chord like with the first dm or how, how did that come about? well no so so there's a guy michael <laughs> who's agent who, who represents me for the most part and then jose who represents amber for the most part so michael and i were talking one day and he was like you know you really like amber like you'd really but also like, Michael would get along. Michael yeah. was my agent when I lived in New York. Just to clarify, right, so Michael, what Michael are they representing New York. you for makeup. makeup. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're signed with the only agency, just as a heads up. And so shout he, out. Michael, shout out to the only agency. Um, <laughs> but Michael reps New York talent, and Jose reps LA. So one day, whatever, Michael was like, "Yo, you would really like Amber." Like I like. I see this, like y'all would get along. So I was like, okay. And I'm like a super chippy chappy bitch. So I was like, well, I'm gonna follow. Oh, no, no, how did it work? I started like, I don't know, maybe spamming your account. Who knows? Like I started like- I think she started following me. I probably did. I'm not, I'm not one of those, I'm not a shy bitch. Like I'm like, oh no, her content fly. Like she's dope. Like I'm gonna follow her. Michael okayed it. <laughs> oh no, no, no. You know what it was? We were both in this, we were both featured in the same magazine. We were both featured mm. in something like a who knows a Cosmo or Vogue or something was talking about our like, you know, favorites of sorts. And then I was like, you know what? This is a sign. Michael said I would like her. We both got tagged in the same article, and I think that's how it started. And then I, I probably still followed you. But <laughs> do you both share similar journeys and how you found your passion slash purpose in makeup, or how how did that journey start? But I, I was like, I went to school for interior design. I didn't know I was going to do makeup. But a lot of my family on my mom's side, like they're all in the arts. And my grandmother, she like came here from the Bahamas to pursue like contemporary piano. My uncle did photography. Like this, like it was like, I mean, we didn't come from money or nothing, but they were definitely like, yo, like whatever. We all pursued arts. Like why not? Like it wasn't like a, there was no pushback in me deciding to do art. Um, but I still wanted to do interior design because I felt like that was the art where the money was <laughs> uh -huh. and that worked at Ralph Lauren to the trade but I was always kind of interested in makeup I just thought it would be like a corporate position I would have taken on or something mm -hmm. of the sort and whatever so long story short I met I worked at Ralph Lauren to the trade and I met this woman who worked for IMG when fashion week was still at the tents and she was like you know would you like you know do some makeup and take pictures for me and I was like sure and she was like okay so like the first gig is Neo it's an Alfani ad it, it, excuse me it's a press for he's like doing an Alfani campaign with Macy's and I was like ah, ah, yeah <laughs> I'll do that shit I'll do that shit of course what I, I wish I had known what I know now then but like yeah I don't our personal journeys are different though but go ahead um, Amber. yeah I'm um, like, I went to makeup school. I finished college, got a degree in PR and went to makeup school, assisted people. Like I took the old school route. <laughs> like, I took the way that they tell you to take. Well, <laughs> that they used to tell you to take. You don't got to take that way no more. But yeah, I assisted people, um, started booking my own jobs. And yeah, New York got old and I moved to LA. 
Wow. Wait, well, we're really split on this podcast too because I'm in New York and Alejandra's in LA. So we can all- Wait, you're in New York? Oh, that's, yeah. That's mm-hmm. hilarious. She's, that <laughs> she's, in so her, she's in her studio. You guys could have shot together. That's Brittany's yeah, photo studio. We, met up. <laughs> we definitely, beautiful. I thought that everybody was in LA. I don't know why. I just assumed. I thought everybody was in LA too. I was in LA until August, but I moved to New York then. I, I went the reverse route. Gotcha. Love gotcha. that for you, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Where's the studio? Uh, it's in Dumbo, in downtown. Dumbo. Oh, wow. you're not far from me. I'm in uh, Tribeca. Girl, oh. we really could have met up. We are across the bridge. The yeah, literally across the bridge. I'm like right, <laughs> right across the street from the Brooklyn Bridge. But anyway, yeah. But no, Amber's yeah. anti uh, New York, and I'm anti LA. So, like, yeah. until I'm we like, come and meet up with each other, I'm not anti. I just after living there for nine years, I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, I will say, though, I like, and I'm speaking it as, as a generalization because people fly, fly here from LA, but I do, I will say I do like the preferred New York glam. Like, it's it's still like, you know, you can still glam it up, but it's more modern. But I feel like that's Amber's style anyway. Mm-hmm. So she probably always attracts those types of clients. Like, I feel like in New York, I have like, I feel like in LA, I'm worried that like, there might be a client that I'm like, ah. but then, you know what? I can't even say that because I had a difficult ass client the other day and I was like, yeah, she was giving me. Yeah, oh, wait, me what is difficult life. about this client? Yeah, she was, was like, tell me more. <laughs> He's like, well, T. Um, so <laughs> I kind of have been embarking in the grooming side more and I feel like I'm getting real comfortable with dudes being like, just chill and like, you know what I mean? So this girl, I mean, what a sweetheart what a beautiful girl but like and there's no judgment with the surgery but like full-blown like kylie jenner xerox on her face wow (laughs) i feel like you see that more in la than new york well that's what i'm saying that's why i said let me take that back because granted she's one in a million i don't always get that type of client but she was just like difficult in a in a weird way like she wasn't necessarily nasty to me or like you know short with me or anything like that but she can you can tell she's so insecure like just based on like the type of surgery she got alone like she did one thing twice I'm like damn girl they didn't get it right the first time like Ugh. and she was being honest with me and the problem really was that she was in some she wrote some like self-help motivational book and I'm like damn baby you don't really love yourself like why why are we playing like and I just felt like she wanted to be in control of the look, which was fine. And when I say control the look, like she wanted to like, well, let me contour my own nose. Let me do this. And I'm just like, baby girl, I'm gonna get then. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, babe, I'm gonna get paid regardless. So I don't even, and I, of course, like five years ago, my ego would have kicked in and I would have felt like, you know, so like, I would have just got so crazy about it and like, so, you know, defeated. But I was just like, babes, if you wanna do, if you wanna do half your face and I'm still gonna get the check, I don't care. But she was just like, she was kind of, and I hate to generalize again, but she was just kind of what I imagine a lot of, could, what kind of clients I could end up with in LA. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like the problem too was she was like, oh, I looked at your Instagram and I like how you do your makeup. And I'm like, mm, girl, no, you're supposed to be looking at my book. Like, <laughs> like, I'm flattered, don't get me wrong, but I'm also like, so I already knew where this was going. It was already going, it was already in a, it was already a weird place of like, Definitely not imposter syndrome, but something in that world. Like there was something about her that wasn't like, it wasn't definitive in what she wanted, but it was also like, I wanted to be in control of it. Like, like she couldn't give the people, whether it be me or hair, the satisfaction that we did something right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though the hair was perfect, she was like, yeah, you know, cause this is not really, could you just like flat iron this piece? And I'm just like, babe. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> it's flat girl, <laughs> it's done. Ugh. But anyway. I don't really get a lot of um, bad clients. She's not a bad client. I feel bad to even say it that way, but I don't get a lot of difficult clients. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So it was kind of like, and then what made it worse was I was already grooming a dude that week as well. And he was fucking easy. Also explain grooming for our listeners who may not know what it is. (laughs) Grooming. Oh, we'll take that because she's the groomer. (laughs) Grooming is men's makeup. That's all. (laughs) That's just a way to say doing makeup for a man. They call it grooming. Yes. That so might good. include like styling hair, but like we don't do that. I'm literally coming to put makeup on a man. That's meant for me. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just as much as I put on a woman. 
Wow. Sometimes that's true. That is I so <laughs> interesting. I never knew that about the word grooming. Like, I, I, that's like yeah. Amber's that bitch. Like back so in she, the day, it, like yeah. back in the day, like it consisting of like, you know, you might have to style and cut some hair, things right. like that. Like they might be looking for like manicures and just like you know, literally like the same thing you do to groom yourself, right? Like the things you do. That's mm. it. But for me, I feel like it's I makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's down there like i don't know what she's trying to prove but she's down there doing a lot what kind well, of i'm also an esthetician i'm also an esthetician so she's also an esthetician feel- oh true. my god i fell in love with that in college there was this woman who owned a spa down the street from campus and i went there because like she had these beautiful like um skincare products i think it was like matazone or something I was obsessed. I was paying way too much than I needed uh, during <laughs> college years on some like small containers of moisturizer. <laughs> but she noticed that I was coming there so often that she was willing to pro- take me on as like a a trainee sort of situation. You. Oh, wow. Right? I was, but then, you know, I'm like, I'm the type where I get super excited and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to jump in. And then like 50 million other things are going to happen <laughs> at the same time. And it's like, damn, I, priorities. Oh, right? I have says no birthday. to nothing. He says yes to everything. And so he ends up in like the most ridiculous <laughs> situations. Like I always tell him, if somebody came over to him and was like, hey, do you know how to assist in chimpanzee love affairs in the zoo? He'd be like, yeah, I'm the expert. Like, let's we'll give it a go. together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When's your birthday? I was born on leap year. Ooh. You're a leap year, Ooh. you're a leap year, baby. You. So I'll be, I'll have it, uh, an official birthday ne- in 2024. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. What are your will birthdays? Will you be like five? No, I will, like the- <laughs> I will be ten. I will be ten. I will be ten. I'll be ten. No, I'll be nine. I'll be nine because I'll be 36 next year. So yeah. Okay. Cute. Nine. Oh, wow. oh my god. I think you're like an Aquarius. Is that Aquarius? <sighs> Pisces? Pisces, Pisces, no? Yeah, you know, Pisces. Is that, that the cuss? Um, Pisces rising. Pisces rising. I'm a Pisces rising. moon. I mean, we're connected somehow. But I'm a Leo. <gasps> I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> Oh, that's answer. So, so we're really seeing all sides yeah. of the world today. Okay, I want to go back to the origin of the podcast because I think all of our listeners are like, <laughs> tell us more. So you guys met yeah. the day before you recorded your podcast. How did your conversation <laughs> in the DMs go? That's like, hey, we need to record a podcast. I know I don't know you, but let's do it. And like, how do you even decipher what you're going to talk about with somebody who you've never even met in person? So I think it started because after Brittany followed me and she was like, you know, on my dick all the time. Um, wow. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. I don't got no shame in that. Eventually, <laughs> she does that. Eventually, I followed her back. <laughs> um, and, uh, but like, I started like looking at her content and then I would be in her DMs and we would just always be commenting and talking about things and like, she's always posting memes and shit in her in her stories so like it'd be like me responding to a meme and and then somehow we get on like a deep conversation about like something not completely unrelated to the meme now and now (laughs) we've somehow talked about beauty and that was just like how things went and then somewhere we started texting and then we'd be texting all the time just like random shit (laughs) um and then as I said earlier, um, I'm over makeups. I'm trying to, I'm getting into my Jackie Aina era, like I said. Mm-hmm. I had told our publicist at the agency, like, hey, can you get me more, like, can you start getting me, like, podcast guest spots or something? And a few days later, she came back, like, so how do you feel about you having a podcast? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and she was like, do you think you should, like, maybe you should just have one, right? I was like, doing what? and she was like I don't know what would you talk about I was like girl I don't know like what do you ask for guest spots bitch like what are you talking about (laughs) and she um and then I thought about it and I was like hmm well then I'd have somebody else to um do half the work if I got a co-host I was like Brittany you want to do this podcast and she was like what and I was like I mean we're always (laughs) talking about like random shit right (laughs) She was like, I mean, we are. And I was like, we could just talk about like makeup and stuff. 
she's like, okay, we can talk about makeup. I'm like, but and stuff too. And no, she's right. like, right. We could just talk. Yeah, we could talk about like the industry and makeup. And I'm like, and other stuff too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but the bag, we yeah. have to, we gotta, we, we needed a, you know, like a streamlined bag that we can yeah. you know, pretend to follow. And also, people are interested in the, we also have such uniquely different stories. Like, yes, we have the same agents and the same PR, but then I'm in New York, two kids, all the things all over the place. She's living married. her best life in LA, married. They already She's know married, not girl. me. <laughs> oh She's God. all living her best life, bitch, living alone, a, a wife's dream. <laughs> 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 but, um, <laughs> but I was like, that's even funnier because we do the same job, but live very different lifestyles. And in opposite sides of the country. So like it added yeah. to it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, also people are interested in like the clients we work with or whatever. And obviously granted, we will be in our DMs. Like we would be talking about beauty shit. And like she said, we'll just trail off and talk about, I don't even know. And Amber is actually like such a good friend to talk about kids with ironically. Like I feel like some of my friends that are single. I don't like to like bring them into that world, but she'd be like, yeah, no, but Damn, girl, you can't call my it's friend. like let me send you a video because <laughs> uh, uh. i'm not that mom but she makes me feel comfortable to be like that because i feel like i know how that's you know i already know ugh, i don't like the parents at my kids schools like i don't like none of that shit so i already am like ugh, hey, like i don't want nobody to be looking at other parents that. and kids you're <laughs> terrible her, her and her husband hate other kids and other parents <laughs> <laughs> funny oh my god wait so it's like um natural maternal instinct that you have amber came from or like had you always been interested in kids or was that something that just kind of like slowly evolved no no um <laughs> well not interested i mean like you know what i mean like just yeah yeah no, 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 no. she's resource. definitely a whisperer uh, of, she's a whisperer of sorts that's so cool well i think i attribute to a few things one i like to tell people i'm childish you know so i think <laughs> me and children we see each other you know? i feel this way too um yeah, like I see them, like as you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not really like you yeah. know, I'm like, use your words. What are you even trying to say? And they're looking at me like, girl, you this how you gonna talk to me? And I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> so like we see each other, you know. Um, a palm reader did tell me once that I was very maternal and I would have a bunch of kids and I snatched my hand from her and was like, Don't know my life back up. <laughs> but also also one of my like closest friends when I lived in New York, like and within our friendship, she met her husband and they she had children and like she went through postpartum. And so it was just also like, I think me being like, well, I don't have kids, but like, I want to be here for my friend. I would like babysit her children, which really caught all of my friends off guard. Like when they, they would be like, <laughs> who whose infant do you have like why do you have a baby or why are you alone with a baby and I'd be like <laughs> chilling bro watching Paw Patrol like mind your business <laughs> eating snacks <laughs> Paw Patrol <laughs> so, so I think that's like me being with them and almost like I was literally I would come and watch them so she could go to the gym and like have a moment to herself so like I think that also is why I'm so like what like girl you're mom go do mom shit like what are you it blows my mind how responsive she is to text messages i'm like what <laughs> yeah so Brittany, responsive i want to hear more things. about how you balance all of that like right. being a mom being a makeup artist and hosting a podcast i mean it's not i, I just <laughs> make it work i don't even know i just i i will say that my husband's like really supportive like he's way cooler than I could ever be. So he already like gets it. Like he like gets, he doesn't, he's not, in, he's adjacent to the industry, but he's not rooted in the industry necessarily, but he still is like a fashionable dude. So like, he just kind of gets the world that we're in. And I mean, I've known Rob for 13 years. So he knew when I, when I wasn't, when I was a shit makeup artist, but I just, <laughs> I knew I was going to be good. I just knew I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> like his best friend told me the other day we were we were all drinking and talking and he was just like of course you're gonna be popping now like you've been doing this shit for 10 years bro like like that's the natural step this is the natural progression like how are you even like why are you surprised at your own growth basically and I feel like Rob has plays a part in that because 
for real. Like if he was, there were a lot of lows. There were a lot of highs. There's some highs. There's a lot of lows, especially in the beginning. And there's definitely a lot of sacrifices. And so, you know, I feel like the sec, I feel like when my son, I was in fashion a lot and I did have this other friend of mine who was like big heavy hitter in fashion at the time. And he also really believed in me, but it was, it was hard. Like it really like, and now it's easier because my kids are six and three. And so like they're both in school and you know, I can, I have a morning to myself. <laughs> like, like, I feel like when they were young, the pandemic had me fucked up. Cause I was like, so wait, so worse. So we just gonna wear masks and like, that's it. Like my <laughs> office <laughs> career I built is, is clipped. Like that's it, it's done. Like, and then, um, then it came back like full throttle for me. And I was of course grateful for that, but it just all, I think the timing worked out within the last five years really well for me again, knock on wood. But I think my partner helps because I don't have a lot of family. So when we are going to do anything, we're going to go out to dinner. If I'm going to be here right now, whatever, if he's not home, I have to pay for a sitter. So like that drive that I have no help is kind of like, nah, bro, I'm a, I'm going to take all the jobs. I'm going to work. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can't. And also like, he's someone that dabbled was in a lot of different businesses. So like even the studio, right? Like I was like, okay, in the pandemic is when we opened the studio. I have two partners, they're both photographers. And that was like an easy kind of semi, it's lucrative now, but at the time it wasn't, but it, you know, it was like, look, people need a place to shoot. They need a wide space. They need to be six feet apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it kind of just worked. Um, and Rob was the one that kind of had my, my engine going like, yo, like just get something. You need something with some passive income, like take the money half. Of course, it sounds easy now. It sounds great in hindsight. But like at the time I was like, bruh, like I'm a fucking housewife with a fake ass studio. Like, I don't know. Like I was just like, I remember being, I was just so stressed. But anyway, I think Rob is the crux of it. Like he, he helps a lot <laughs> with, he is. Cause, Cause I feel like, you know, there's been plenty of times that I was like, yo, fuck this shit. I'm just going to do a corporate job or I'm going to like, do something in makeup, but I can't do this or da da da. And I remember like, I always would like talk or even when I went to aesthetic school, I went to aesthetic school, even though I'd already pretty much practiced it, but I was, I was like, I want to get my license. I also did that during the pandemic. Like, let me just have my license. And Rob was just like, yeah, like just do the shit you like to do. Like, why, why would you change your career now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I just think that that little birdie in your ear kind of helped me go in, but I don't know how I balance it. I'm, I really don't have a full, <laughs> there's no solid answer for that. I just make it work. I just make the time. Like if I have to, like, if I got to, we, if we got to change the time, I'll be like, yo, Rob, we got to change the time. Or like, I'll call the babysitter or, you know, I'll just make it work. But now I'm, I'm in a position that I can afford to make it work. It was stressful five years ago. That's so fortunate. <laughs> but five years ago, I only had one Rob. kid. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rob. Brittany and Rob. Come on, Rob. Home. What are some Come of your Rob. favorite um, clients to work on now or favorite types of jobs? now that you're further along in your career for both of you? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. That's my favorite type of client. Easy, quick, good skin, no fuss, minimal effort, big rates. <laughs> I like to do a little and get paid a lot. Are you mostly Period. working on like TV shoots like Brittany for you like fashion week or are they like home calls for celebrities like fill us in? Well, our agency does primarily celebrity. So we don't do like e-com or fashion stuff. If we happen to do that, it might be like something that we booked on the side or like if Vogue commissions us to do something, it's likely because a celebrity is attached to it. We really don't. We both kind of separated ourselves from the fashion world. Fashion is elitist and no matter how hard you work and no matter how great your resume is, they still make you feel like shit on set. But when you're with Fashion a celebrity- is racist. Racist as fuck, bro. Damn. But we digress. But we digress. So, uh, yeah, no. So we work primarily with celebrities. So like if I work Fashion Week, I'm doing celebrities that are attending shows, mm -hmm. which is the bag because the brand is likely paying them to be there, which means they're paying me, which means they, you know, it, all the things. Um, Amber's in LA, so I feel like there are probably more moments. What you feel gets. like I do in LA? What you feel like it's I do? It's more than me. No, 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 no. I feel like <laughs> in LA, there's more shit happening because the fucking weather's nice all the time and there's, you know, award season. Like, I feel like we got a week and they got a season. You know what I'm saying? Which is fine. It don't mean I'm not working. It just means that, like, she might you have the capability. Way more than me. 
Well, I like also. I'm like I'm a. I need to be busy. Like I'm one of those people. Like I, if I'm not yeah. busy, like oh, I God. feel uncomfortable. Which yep. is probably why I balance all the things. Because I'm like, yeah, I can't be dormant. It drives me crazy. Yeah. My therapist I'm says, like, it's crazy, but still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. Also, I paid like glam squad during. Uh, fashion week this past year so really wish i knew that i could have called you up but uh here we are i mean we don't got glam squad rates but i got you this <laughs> i used no, to work for, for sure. a competitor back in the day be glam i don't know if they still exist what was that experience like oh i worked with mariah carey oh my gosh are you <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> No, I was Lit, just listening yeah, to yeah. Osana yesterday. That's so funny. Because <laughs> MC is the queen. Like, hello. I worked with Mariah Carey. She would book through the app. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it was like back in like 20, 2016, 2015. I just got signed to the agency. But yeah, I was a part of the, uh, um, they had started tiers. I was a part of the top tier, obviously. And, um, Naturally, that yeah. was like celebrities and famous people. They were usually just like random little, like I don't know, just people who could afford to pay the most, which was still like four fifty hair and makeup. It was still only two fifty, but anyway. Um, yeah, I would always get these requests from Mariah Carey, and I would decline them because I was like, Mariah, I'll be because I, I, you're not thinking Mariah Carey's using <laughs> Uber of makeup, right? Like you're not thinking that. I'm like, decline. What? Who is this crazy? Oh, Mariah Carey, that's crazy. Decline, decline, decline. And then one day I think I was like free. And I also realized that it said Tribeca. And I knew she, you know, we all know she has a home down there. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I ain't doing shit. I could use this little 250, except. <laughs> and like the owner of the app calls me and she's like, oh my God, you finally accepted it. I was like, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, what do you mean? She's like, okay, so this, so let me just give you like a breakdown. I'm like, whoa. Wait. Break, breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Was serious. That was amazing. No, that was amazing. But she was like, I was like, you're doing a lot. Like, this is the real Mariah Carey. And she was like, there's only one Mariah Carey. And I was like, <laughs> That's a quote. I guess you got a point there. I was going to yeah, say, this is true. the clip of the episode. <laughs> Period. That's a direct line from Mariah. There's only one Mariah Carey. Let me check. Let me fuck that. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I accepted and I did her makeup a few times, actually. It was like damn near like every day for like a few weeks. And then yeah. I became less busy. I became less available because I was busy, getting busy with like my agency work. And I mean, all it takes is one time to say no. And then, you know, they didn't say no. Yeah. Wow. How was she? Did you like her? Mad chill. Everybody's very calm with me always. I think I have a calming energy, I've been told. Wow. <laughs> she was just like a mom, like chill, like kids running around, climbing all over her. Aww. I do remember her being on like an all protein diet because she said that was what worked best for her blood type. Her doctor had I recently think I've read her. that, that she like only eats salmon or something. Oh, well, at that time she was like, yeah, I guess I could go for a little, a little, <laughs> a little petite <laughs> filet. Like, she would just have her cook, like, cook her, like, a little filet. I could, yeah, I could eat that. <laughs> like, the queen. I want to talk more about grooming. And yes. what would you say are the biggest differences between doing a man and a woman's makeup or non binary? Well, non-binary will be in the middle, if that makes sense, right? Like, they they will be in, like, the middle kind of what we would do. It's a bit of grooming and a little bit of makeup, like, a little bit of grooming with a pop of color, mm. <laughs> you know? Maybe, like, um, no nothing but a lip, <laughs> something like that. Um, and then women's makeup, of course, like we all know what women's makeup is. It's like, you know, the full shebang, the full, all the things, um, whatever she wants, <laughs> Basically. Um, full face. Yeah. And then grooming is kind of going to be more so in my opinion, like skincare focused, kind of focused more so on like prepping the skin, 
and main and mainly like your main focus is the base part of what you would do if you were doing makeup on a woman or on a non-binary person like you would kind of just focus on the base part right like just like the basics so just skin you're not really like highlighting or contouring or anything like that you're really just covering blemishes maybe filling in beards if they have beards and they're imperfect maybe filling in hairlines if that's a thing if there's no barber Mm -hmm. in the budget making sure they're not ashy you know I work definitely everybody yeah most of my clients are black men so it's like making sure they're not ashy (laughs) can't have them out here with dry ass skin Uh, (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> I want to know from both Brittany and Amber, what are maybe one or two or maybe none if you're not willing to talk about it, but what were some oh. of the craziest situations that you came into and you were like, oh my God, this is a major cleanup before I can even start getting to the final result. Do you have any stories? Like oh that? my God. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, for, for grooming, you mean? Either. Either. Oh, oh. In general? Um, in general, yeah. In general. Oh, in general. There's tons of those. Actually, yes. So I had to do this shoot with, um, her name is Jessalyn something. And I think I, I know who you're to... talking about. I think I follow her on Instagram. She's into yeah, yoga. She's into yoga. She's like pansexual. And I say that because she's like, she talks about it like on the chat. But anyway, so pulled up on set and I say this with love and respect because we bonded and all the things and like she was that girl after like we, we killed it but bitch we she showed up and it was giving like it was giving oh so we just gonna destroy rebuild because the because they didn't have a hairstylist <laughs> they did have a hairstylist I'm sorry they did have a hairstylist but she was the assistant but she was obviously equally if not more talented and she was there and like there was already a little pushback because they were trying to be shady about the hair and how much time it was going to take and we just looked at the girl and we just looked at jessalyn and we was like we gonna we gonna take our time like we <laughs> we we got this <laughs> and we did this cover shoot fucking killed it she looked so good like dewy like just 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 supple like a great like you could pluck that bitch and she <laughs> had these sick bantu knots but it was crazy because and the only reason I bring this up, why it's so notable too, is because I guess Trump's son was like trying to shame, like fat shame, like people. Like he was just like talking shit. And I guess he reposted our cover. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, we need engagement. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> you're not sh-. And she's so like comfortable in her skin. And she's so like that girl. Like, she was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you out here giving me the likes. Like, let's do it. Come on. Come on. Trump daddy, Trump daddy son. Come on. But that was like one of the few times. Only with the guy, I had a moment with Kenya Barris where they lit him really poorly. And his under eyes in the camera looked so yellow. And it was like the first time ever I like spiraled for real, like what a dude. Because dudes <laughs> are generally like paint by numbers, you know? And I was spiraling, like I had to full blown put like orange under his eyes. Like, like us walking in the street, I would have been like, no, we're not like, you know what I mean? But I had, I fucking was scrambling. I was like, no, 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 no. We just gonna take this orange bitch like Lion King and we just, <laughs> you're gonna be here. <laughs> but yeah, those are my two uh, stem to sterns. Well, I've definitely had some moments like back in my fashion days, like a girl coming from one show late to the show I'm doing and she's like, you know what I'm saying, covered in oil and glitter, like something like really stupid. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and the next look is like, fresh face you know <laughs> so I've definitely had those moments where it's like oh okay this is great like we're just gonna really start from <laughs> scratch here um and then usually honestly anytime I go a really long time without seeing majority of my clients when I see them I'm like hmm you so you just don't wash your face when you see me <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, is this a thought that you have in your head or is this something that you actually ask? Oh, I'll say it. (laughs) I'll say it. Like, so you just didn't, what you been doing? Not drinking water? (laughs) No? Been been putting body lotion on your face again? Oh my God. Cool, 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 cool. 
So there's always those moments where, like, all the guys, like, anytime they have, like, downtime and they're left to themselves, especially if they are single and don't have girlfriends or, you know, a really, a really, really um, loving hoe or something, you know, <laughs> then <laughs> they usually show up a wreck and you have to piece them back together. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, I feel, I feel like that you both have really good morning routines or healthy habits that help you stay aligned and prepared for either the day to come the week to come what are some things that you found like that you stick with on a regular basis that you implement every day so let me see i start every morning and end every night with my five minute journal Mm. because i am so fucking aligned and centered (laughs) <laughs> um so I do that every morning and night I got it from an outset event it's a Cute. Scarlett Johansson skincare um so I do that I meditate a few times a week I went through a re- I did I meditated every day for a year um not this year but one year I did that so now it's just like you know a few times I meditate before and after bed and let's see oh my god I don't talk to anybody I don't respond to any text messages no messages no nothing until I write in my five minute journal and drink my green juice and make my tea in the morning mm. the, love that that's LA life baby <laughs> <laughs> Brittany's like oh that's why god. sometimes this bitch doesn't answer me until 1pm my time <laughs> She always texts me when I'm with the kids. I'm like, bitch, it's three o'clock. Oh my. I'm like, I'm now open to communications with others. Yeah. Our our other host is like this too. (laughs) I'll be like at 10 a.m. like furiously sending text messages on the subway. And then she'll respond like, sorry, I haven't had my green juice yet or been to Pilates. Like, I'll talk to you later in the day. (laughs) I'm like, okay. Yeah. I always love the text. And it's at least like two or three messages from her or my sister. They're one day apart. And I always wake up to me- if it's not her, it's my sister. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I like, think unless she- it's like something really, really urgent, like very urgent, I'll answer. But if it's just like, why are you communicating with me? I got to unthaw, as my friend says. You need, I need unthawing time every morning. So that's how I like to stay centered and like, you know, not let anybody fuck with that time or that space. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I, like I said, this is a wife's dream to live alone because I don't have none of that shit. Like I will, I have eventually implemented, I will say recently as I've been going ham in the gym, I'm like, I have to have a green smoothie in the morning. I never was this girl. I can't even believe I'm saying this out loud, but that um I think my ritual I mean it sucks because I don't think I have really a true ritual like I wake up get the kids ready for school (laughs) but like I do you have the most ritual ritual like not like calming necessarily it's just like obligatory but I feel like I will say though yeah I will say so I get up take the kids to school I will say though that once, because I have to take my son, or sometimes my husband and I'll switch off. He'll take my son, I'll take my daughter. She's the last one, right? She's the later one. Once Tegan's in school, yo, I'm like skipping. Like I'm <laughs> I'm running to the green juice. I'm I'm running to my trainer. I'm like, oh, Alex, how are you? I miss you. Like I'm giving, like that's when my morning starts. So I feel like in the, the real ritual part, I mean, yeah, it's five days a week, but like I don't enjoy it. <laughs> but then... So it's like, I'll either have a green juice, I'll go work out, or a green smoothie, go work out. I guess it can, if I'm not working, it kind of can fluctuate. But I feel like lately I've been really on par with that. I'm also taking naps again. Mm. That bitch takes naps. So we oh, love I'm that so for jealous. me. That's another... <laughs> Ironically, yeah, that's she's part taking midday naps. <laughs> that is a part of her. And like, let's be clear. Let's be very, very clear with when I do wake up and then I look at the things and I engage, sometimes now I'm enraged and this bitch is taking a nap. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like now I'm like, I'm like, and she's like, let's say I do wake up and I go straight to it. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like <laughs> spiraling 
And she's like, oh my God, sorry, I was taking a nap. <laughs> or, or I'll finally get to the messages and she, it's happy hour where she's at, like it's evening and she's like, fuck this. It's like one of her fuck this days. <laughs> and I'm just watching her skip through the city yelling fuck this. And I'm like, cool, cool. Viral. It is one o'clock here. It is still fucking business hour. Like, what are we doing? Please. <laughs> Tell us about the funniest, wildest, intriguing, or most inspirational DM you've ever received. I can't say one in specifics, but what I will say is certain celebrities have really crazy cult followers, and I get really fucking crazy DMs. I had to send this to Jesse recently because someone followed me named Jesse Williams Chain. <laughs> like his necklaces. What? <laughs> oh, what? And I said, this. Oh my god! And they just like they all lie about how they're you know they 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 are Jesse and da, da, da. and I feel like the craziest ones I got was when I worked with Paris Jackson and all these people swore that Michael Jackson came back from the grave and they were in my DM. I feel like that's all oh. I can think of immediately. Uh, that's it that's pretty back. crazy. Yeah, that yeah, works. I got spammed. I mean, the craziest DMs I would get would probably be like old men, like trying to be sugar daddies, right? Like sugar daddy mm -hmm. accounts. I get those. <laughs> I get those pretty often. Well, I think that I leads know. us in perfectly to the DM of the week, <laughs> which is okay. who was your favorite client to do their makeup and why? <laughs> I think Ed Sheeran is my favorite for sure. <gasps> hands down. That's really He's cool. like, he's like, he's like the rich person I want to be, you know, like he... He's that dude, like he's very chill. He's so unassumingly chill. And it's such a compliment to him because you just forget how big of a star he is. Like there's a photo on my Instagram and we were doing like Colbert. We had like a week of press and like, I wasn't paying it any mind, like whatever. We like rolled up to Colbert, no big deal. I'm getting my shit out of the truck. <laughs> And I got paparazzi that shot, like, trying to, me up. <laughs> trying to get out of the photo. <laughs> and I keep forgetting, because I'm like, I've been to this back door of Colbert a trillion times with amazing people all the time. I'm like, I've never gotten, like, accidentally caught in a paparazzi. Nah. When they're trying to get Ed, they're going to get Ed. And it doesn't matter who the fuck is in the picture. I look so crazy. It's, like, not even a good fit. Like, it's just, like, all the things. But it is, like, that it was picture. kind of ideal. It was great. Sparked so much joy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my our, our agent in LA, the agents in LA, because I came to LA to visit at one point, I was supposed to go and I never showed up. But the day that I was supposed to go, they took that picture of me <gasps> creepily in the Ed Sheeran photo and they put it all over the agency. Oh I'm like, you God. see, bitch, that's why I didn't show up. I'm like, really, Michael? You just printed 400 copies and pasted it like what is this mean girl like you just threw them all like <laughs> over the agency <laughs> I, yeah I fuck with I mean the few clients that I still have lingering you know like the ones that won't let me go I fuck with them for the most part so um, I really enjoyed working with Marcus Marcus Scribner that's it's like working with my little cousin we're just like hanging out you know singing Drake, Drake and talking shit um so that's always cool he's mad chill he's got beautiful skin and i do little work so he's definitely <laughs> a favorite um i l always love working with travis just because it's just amazing to see he's like a fucking rock star so it's just amazing to be around all that and like he's cool i also do very little you know i'm just like handing him chapstick so <laughs> that's cool we love that uh the 1942 is always flowing like there's always chick-fil-a around like it's a good time. It's also like hanging out with the homies. I'm not gonna hold you. Uh, um, and... so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, probably, I'm like, I'm getting paid. I have 1942 and Ch Chick Fil A. Cool. <laughs> I love this shit. And for where I you guys are in your careers too, I think it's so important that you're only taking on good energy. And I think that also just shows us that like you can be successful without having to take on every single opportunity. You can just take on what brings you joy. For sure. Correct. I love I'm saying no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love a good now. My agent likes to hit me up like, so you want to come out of retirement or, and I'm like, let me see. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes there, there I is, say there... no first and then I go back and I'm like, oh my God, I should have said yes, huh? <laughs> right. Just like with my I like Karen. text Brittany like, yeah, I like text Brittany like, oh my God, should I say yes to that? Shit. Is it too late? <laughs> let me see if I can say yes to that. I definitely said no. I'm so happy you both have each other. But I think now has come the time where we would love for you to share with our listeners where they can stay updated on all your work, the podcast. Yeah, you can find us Instagram, TikTok, socials for the most part, A and B Conversation Pod. Find us individually at Burr, B-E-R underscore Amos and Britty, B-R-I-T-T-Y, Whitfield. Um, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere you listen to Believe. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apple music. All us, all us believe family. Oh, Thank you guys so much for being here. You both, oh my gosh, amazing goddesses! Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. Thank you yes, so thank much you for having us. It. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Damsels in the DMs. As always, please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcast to help us continue to bring wonderful content like this episode to your ears. That's it. Ooh, we are always excited when new DMs arrive. And if you want to have your DM of the week on an episode, please feel free to send it our way. And as always, we're here every Monday. So stay updated on all things damsels. And we'll keep churning out some dope content for you to stay engaged with. (laughs) All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Damsels in the DMs. Until next time. It's going down in the DMs. Bye. Bye. DMs, DMs, we don't need them. We just leave them. Please. Yeah. It's going down in the DMs. Bye.